going. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Whoops, I think it's on me. Okay. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Welcome to our Friday coffee chat. My name is Ashton. And this is Stacy from Hi. my day, hanging out with our coffee. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, so good. Today, we thought um, that it would be a good idea to just talk about um, three ways that you can cheaply and effectively translate your content during summer vacation. Since, mm -hmm. you know, if you have um, someone on your staff that's kind of the designated, um, you know, bilingual person, someone who deals with, um, you know, specific languages or content, things like that, and, you know, they're hanging out on the beach for a month, mm -hmm. you know, here are some ways to kind of um, work with that and kind of make up for that. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, so Stacy, how about you tell us the first uh, <laughs> first tip? <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought this was an appropriate topic because I'm leaving tomorrow morning to go to California to oh, do what? the whole Disney thing. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, just Yellow. for a week. Don't worry. I'm going to take my laptop. Mm. I know. I know. Don't yeah. judge me. I know. Don't judge me. But... <laughs> I will have a good time. We're going with the whole family and nice. it's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> so, and so I was thinking about this, like in my job, you know, it's, there's not as much things can function without me, which is great. For you know? sure. It's very streamlined. And my goal is in a couple of years to be able to like, just take off the whole summer. Wouldn't that be cool? Right. But um, for now I can be gone a week or so and it doesn't really cause any problems. But I think, you know, I mean, this this is a blog post I wrote a couple of weeks ago, and I think it, I hear this a lot where people, like you said, rely on somebody who's bilingual on their staff mm -hmm. to kind of take care of that. Um, if there's like a Spanish speaker or whatever, they just call that person and they come and help them. Right. Um, but people take time off. People take vacations. And so, you know, how can you you know, plan for that and still provide that support, even if your language speaker is out. For sure. So, yeah. So, I don't know, do you run into that, like, with the recruiting and scheduling? And I mean, yeah, I definitely run into that. You know, there are a lot of, uh, yeah, one of the main things that I do with MindLink is I do a lot of um, recruiting, you know, uh, project scheduling coordination type of work. Um, and there are a lot of linguists that we definitely run into where, you know, they're gone for the whole summer. So we're limited mm -hmm. to maybe one or two people when normally we would have had 10 to pull from. Mm -hmm. um, and so it definitely creates a pretty big um, linguist deficit, I guess you could say. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> to put it in yeah. proper terms. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it's definitely it's definitely a pertinent issue. I mean, not only on the recruiting side of things for a language service provider, but, you know, also in companies that, you know, might not necessarily work with bilingual people all the time, but sometimes, you know, there might mm -hmm. be a little bit of a demand, things like that. I mean, right. I, I have worked a couple of jobs where that was the case, you know, where there was one or, one or two people that were designated specifically for Chinese or specifically for Spanish or Vietnamese or something like that. And, you know, when they're out of town, there's really nothing we can do, you know, yeah, we, right. that support is completely dropped. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, this, this um, blog post that you wrote is actually pretty handy and definitely um, something I think a lot of um, organizations can implement and in their summer strategy, I guess you could call it. Um, and we'll, mm -hmm. we'll post the link to the blog in the, uh, the video description as well. Um, but I think definitely the first, uh, the first tip in the blog post, have a process that's definitely like the make or break um, tip, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you know specifically that there is one person on your staff that covers one language um, and they're gonna be gone for a couple of weeks, you know, make sure that you plan ahead or, you know, even if it's now, mm -hmm. it's not too late to try and find someone else, you know, just right. to cover that little break. Um, but, you know, it's convenient. Like it, the article says like, well, it's convenient to be able to call someone and just say, hey, we need your help. Um, 
can you help us out like right now? You know, that's pretty convenient, but most likely, especially during the summer, that's just not mm -hmm. going to happen. You well, know? in organizations that are, um, I don't know, more mature to use like a business school term, mm -hmm. um, you, you really want to strive to be more process dependent than people dependent. That's true. That's I mean, that's just a general principle, right? I mean, your people are really valuable no matter what you do, right? For sure. And getting the right people in those roles. But at the same time, those people if you are, if they're constantly doing heroics, you know, and Don't saving the day, the and that, that, that shouldn't be, I mean, it's cool that they're willing to do that, but that shouldn't be your like normal yeah. state. That should be like, okay, occasionally, you know, but, like, but there's last, like last resort, last second, yeah, you know? Right. Yeah. So having a process for um, supporting language, um, sh if, if you do work with um, non-English speakers, uh, you need to have a process for how you're going to deal with that. And I don't know, what do you, what do you think a process, you know, a simple one might look like? Right. I mean, probably, well, I don't know. What would a simple process look like? I mean, probably something like, you know, maybe having something like an email template. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, something like, you know, you get, you know that you're working with, say, Vietnamese. You know you, mm -hmm. you, know you have a couple of Vietnamese clients. Um, just to have your grounds covered, I would say, yeah, maybe have some kind of like an email template saying, hey, you know, I'm looking for a resource to help cover Vietnam, right. just to kind of like be mm -hmm. there on call right. or Some sort of like request, you know, yeah. process. Like exactly. how is, how is it, how is any translation or interpretation requested by a requester, you know, and, right. and then what happens, like how to, what, who schedules that, who handles that, right. you know? Um, right. So, and just like putting it in writing, you know, just even lot. if it's three or four steps, for sure. But then you kind of know it's concrete. So. You know, it's easy to kind of exactly. train other people on how to use that as well. And right, yeah, yeah, yep. totally, yeah. totally awesome. I like it. Yeah. What's cool. another tip? Um, I think we covered the. Oh, whoops, screen's on me. I think we covered the first two. Put it on writing. Have a process, mm -hmm. and then finally find a partner. Well, um, let me say something about the second one. The second oh, point. Yeah, yeah as the author of this for blog. sure for sure you don't <laughs> have a lot to say about that i'm sure well a lot no but i think i i've seen and again i'll see you know some smaller organizations nonprofits, you know small companies um if they need to provide language support for clients i've seen like they just hook them up with a speaker like an interpreter or a bilingual staff member and I have seen it where the staff member reads an application or translate it verbally for, you know, the Spanish speaker. But you might as well just Spanish. translate the application, right? Exactly. That save a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> so I would just say, like, anytime you have, like, a scenario where somebody's like, okay. Um, I need to fill out this one. Welcome to, like, my, um, you know... I don't know if you're getting a massage or something and I have yeah. an intake form. I don't have to sit here and like, okay, what nombre, you know, come on. Right, right. Just yeah. hand them your application. And that way if they come in and they're Spanish speaking, you just hand them it, they fill it out. Later when your person comes back from vacation, they can decipher it. For sure. know, or, or you can, you know, do something else. But right. I think that's kind of what I was going through. I mean, definitely document your process, but, but you know, but, document. But, yeah. Translate your applications, forms, applications, forms, menus, brochures. <laughs> Just being yeah. able to hand something over can be really valuable. So. Definitely. It saves a lot of time and money. Mm -hmm. Works out for everyone in the long run. Cool. It's easier than you think to get Definitely. that translated. It's not really a huge deal and for can sure. be pretty affordable. So for sure. Anyway, for sure. that's my that's my uh beef on that. That's my uh, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. And a beautiful <laughs> segue into the last tip, find a partner. Um, yeah. So yeah, if you, um, if you're relying on someone in particular, um, 
like on your staff to provide translation and you don't really have any other um, leads or resources already in mind, you know, you can partner with a language service provider, such yeah. as Mind Link Resources. Um, Who would a good service provider be? <laughs> I have no idea. No, kidding. <laughs> Um, but yeah. yeah, but that's basically one of the major things that MindLink does. We, mm -hmm. um, you know, help you cover your linguistic needs essentially. Um, so yeah, what we do is we, mm -hmm. you know, find linguists for different languages that yeah. businesses or organizations need. We, you know, make sure that they're mm -hmm. qualified to be an interpreter, translator, you know, things like that. And then basically schedule yeah. that schedule that connection for you so yeah um, we totally cover vacations or you know it's um we could even right. send Just people to your site you know yeah. it's yeah we exist to solve this problem so exactly. it's good to take advantage of that for sure both short-term and long-term solutions so and then you can focus on you know the service you provide exactly cool awesome well i think that about wraps it up for this Friday. i'm gonna have a great time in california and uh, <laughs> be sitting at the beach yeah it is not i'm not gonna worry about anything because you know we have some processes right we have a good team exactly everything's good yeah. yay i am i'm so jealous that you're going to california it's currently we have a flash flood warning in dc right now so <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, Let's stay dry. Raise because I'm not. Oh. <laughs> well, hang in there, and yeah, it's all uh, good. yeah. Anyway. we'll uh, we'll see you next week. I, you know, I think I'm back on Friday. Yeah, I'm back next Friday. Okay. So, cool. I'll be um, when next time you see me, I'll be tan and feeling oh, good. So. Stop it. Stop. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining everyone. We'll yeah. see you on Friday for coffee chat. Have a good week. Oh my gosh. Ciao. Bye.